today is a great day. The reason it's a great day is I've just picked up my new coffee machine. And as we know, the secret fuel that drives every single IT professional is generally coffee. So I've had a coffee machine for a few years, but it's pretty much done a stash. So I've upgraded a little bit, bought myself a nice one. So time for much better brews at home. Oh, I might even do a video on coffee production at some stage, but there's another reason it's a great day. And I was checking the Apex Connect 2019 agenda for the first time. There's been an emails going back and forth to the speakers of which I'm one. But it's the first time I've actually gone and checked the agenda. And one of the things that took me by surprise because I should have realized this before I even checked the agenda was Dan McGann, who's a member of the developer advocate team that I'm on, and Chris Saxon uh, are both coming to Apex Connect as well. So that is literally more than half of the developer advocate team all coming to one event. And you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal? Why, why would they be all going to one event? Because normally we spread ourselves both chron chronologically across the year, but also uh, geographically. Chris is based in the UK, Dan in the States, and me in Australia. We normally spread ourselves out over conferences as well. The reason is they're Apex conferences. And what's all the fuss about Application Express? That's the question that's been asked to me by a few people, and I thought I'd answer it in this video while I'm driving home with my new coffee machine. The reason I wanted to make a video about Application Express is I was doing some work recently for uh, a friend actually who got in touch and said we've got some performance problems and can you help us out and I thought I'd drop in. This was just locally in Perth and they're an Oracle shop but they don't use Application Express at all but they have a lot of applications all based on the Oracle database and when I went in there one of the things they were having was a particular uh, program, a particular routine that was critical to them, it had to be, it was very time critical in the way it finished, was taking about 60 seconds to run. And I said, well, that's probably bad SQL or needs some SQL tuning. So we did some tracing. And what was interesting was we found out there was actually nothing wrong with the SQLs. The SQLs are all running perfectly fine. And in fact, when we look at the actual program itself, it was doing all that it needed to do. It was satisfying all the business requirements. And there was nothing wrong with the code and nothing wrong with the SQL. It was just taking 60 seconds. The problem was an issue of latency. And even though the networks between application servers and databases are normally pretty good, the fact is if you do tens of thousands of calls to a database to achieve a business function, that latency is gonna add up. It's gonna cost you a lot of time. And so what we realized was this application, which was written in C-sharp, but really the, the language doesn't matter, was literally throwing thousands upon thousands of SQL calls over the fence to the database. It was running those calls lightning fast, but 10,000 times a small amount of time is still a lot of time, 60 seconds in this case. It wasn't really a SQL tuning exercise that could be done because all the SQLs were running fine. So I told them that you know this was going to take a little bit longer than just you know tweaking a few SQLs or uh, putting a few indexes on or remove a few indexes. It was actually required a little bit of a refactoring of the code. And so they said, well, can you help us out here? And I said, well, the secret here is latency. Cut a long story short, although I've been obviously waffling on a bit already, is what we found was simply moving a big chunk of the code into PL SQL such that, and we didn't change any SQLs, we, we still ran 10,000 SQLs. But what we did was we actually took chunks of the code and said, well, the C Sharp program will make one call and that one call might do 500 SQLs and then return with some information. And then the C Sharp program might do a bit more processing and then we'll try and batch up as many other SQLs as we can into one lob over the fence into the database. And so ultimately we ended up with doing something like about 10 or 11 calls to the database. And each of those calls would do 500 to 1000 SQLs. Now, obviously that could probably be improved upon. The SQLs were all very short and, and sort of didn't really use set processing. But even just doing that, just being able to run the same 10,000 calls but in batches of say 500 or 1,000, depending on what the business requirements we could satisfy were, absolutely knocked this performance problem on the head. We actually managed to get the you know, performance down to a tenth of a second. And it's funny, when we first demonstrated this to the manager to solve the problem, they thought that, that you know, we'd done something illegal. They thought we'd sort of broken the application, that surely all this work that in theory was taking so long couldn't be done in a tenth of a second. 
but it could be just by focusing on removing that latency by putting more work into the database. Funnily enough, if you look at some of Tone Coppola's videos, I'll put a link in the description below, he can actually show some proofs that actually doing more work in the database like this actually reduces the amount of database CPU that's consumed. So if you're paying by the CPU for your database, which most people are, then actually doing more in the database actually saves you money. The key thing is, if you can easily move work into the database, then you get a lot of benefits. And I stress that in this particular case, we didn't refactor any of the SQLs. We didn't refactor the code. We simply moved to where it was running. That made regression testing obviously that much more easy to do because we hadn't actually rewritten much. We'd simply shifted where the code was running. As you can see, I'm stuck in traffic here. We've slowed down so much for the freeway. That brings me on to Capification Express. Even if you write all of your SQL entirely in the Application Express layer, which generally isn't seen as best practice because it effectively makes your maintenance perhaps harder and your refactoring and code reuse more challenging. Even just doing that, you know, using, you could call it say, worst practice, you're still achieving so much more with Application Express than you could be doing using a third party language. Because by definition, everything on Application Express that's running SQL is running on the database node. So just a novice developer jumping in and throwing things together in Application Express might be making the standard maintenance difficulties that all applications might have when they're written by novice, but they're probably going to perform better than anything they could possibly do using a 3GL. So that's the first reason I think Application Express is such an undervalued proposition, even for the novice developer. For someone who's not particularly familiar with application development paradigms, they're going to produce really good performant applications just by using Application Express as a framework. The second reason I wanted to talk about Application Express is I had this same discussion with my friend at work. I said, yep, okay, we've solved this particular problem by moving application logic into the database and therefore all the SQLs are running not across the wire but on the database directly as well. I said, have you thought about using Application Express not for this critical component because it was already written but for other components of your application that are not yet written. Save yourself a lot of activities in upstream frameworks and just throw stuff into Application Express. A lot of parts of an application often are really just a case of what I call windowing on data. The ability to view some data, the ability to update some data with not a lot of complicated application logic sitting alongside it. Maybe that's all you need to do for a lot of, you know, for maybe 80% of your business requirements. Application Express for application components that aren't yet written is absolutely perfect for that. And once again, you can give it to a novice, give it to a junior programmer, and they're going to crank out absolutely fantastic applications with little or no effort because of Application Express. And the third reason I wanted to talk about Application Express is, and perhaps one of the drivers why Dan, myself, and Chris are all attending the same Application Express conference, is the strength of the community. And I've just mentioned a couple of examples where the novice programmer is going to be perhaps better insulated from performance issues and maintenance issues by using Application Express. The other place the novice programmer, and in fact all programmers, are going to be uh, helped by Application Express is that strength of community. There are so few areas where you can literally throw a question on the Apex forums, on Ask Tom, on Office Hours, where literally Apex on Twitter, where literally Apex practitioners are climbing over themselves to help you out. The strength of the community is simply astounding. People are really keen to help you with your issues. They're really keen to post blog posts about uh, educational guides for Apex. But more importantly, the people that actually own and write the product are just as active on those communities. If you end up being a more experienced Application Express programmer and you find issues with the product or you have ideas for how to improve the product, then what happens is very often Application Express is one of the forerunners in terms of getting those enhancements and those fixes into the product really rapidly. It's a very rapidly moving application development environment. So don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to bag other application development frameworks. Obviously there's the massive strength of the Java community and we also have strong Windows communities in .NET and ODP.NET, etc. Those all have their place and are very strong frameworks. My point is, 
Application Express does not necessarily have to be a replacement to those frameworks. It can be a perfect complement to those frameworks for building data-centric applications incredibly rapidly, much, much faster in my opinion than you'll be able to achieve with those other environments, simply because of its closeness to the Oracle database. So if you're basing your enterprise on Oracle database, Application Express can really dramatically uh, improve your productivity in terms of rolling out applications and rolling out solutions to your customers. In particular, as I talk about customers, you'll be amazed at what even customers, as in what I call citizen developers, people who aren't, don't have an IT background, even they can crank out really robust solutions with a little bit of IT assistance using Application Express. I know, for one, some people that have actually had no programming background, all they know is SQL, and yet they are cranking out wonderfully sophisticated application express applications just with a little bit of mentoring at the final stages for things like authorization and security from a IT professional but the actual functionality is given solely by them because they know SQL and that's really all they need to know to build wonderfully fluent and powerful application express applications. If you're an Oracle shop and you're using successful frameworks, that's great, but have a look at Application Express. I think you'll be blown away by the power of it and how much you can achieve with just a little bit of SQL knowledge and database knowledge. Thanks for watching. I'll hopefully get home and have myself a beautiful coffee very, very soon. See you soon. God damn it, what is this traffic?